LumaFusion now offers an exciting new feature, allowing you to start a project in LumaFusion and finish it in Final Cut Pro 10. Using XML, an open standard language commonly used by video editing software, you can now export a timeline from LumaFusion, open it in Final Cut Pro 10, and pick up where you left off. I should also mention that while this is XML and XML is a standard, different NLEs like Premiere and Resolve have their own implementation of XML. This version of XML export is custom tuned for Final Cut Pro 10 and may not transfer or open in another NLE. There are also some important capabilities and limitations to understand when moving a project from LumaFusion to Final Cut. Because the programs are made by different manufacturers and have some unique features, not every single thing on a LumaFusion timeline translates to Final Cut. Knowing what does and doesn't work will help you in your planning when making your videos. You can expect multiple video and audio tracks to transfer just fine, along with audio levels and their keyframes, speed changes and transitions, as well as the fit and fill mode setting, and size, position, and motion changes, including their keyframes. Some items, such as titles, however, cannot be transferred to Final Cut as editable content. So instead, a rendered file will be added to the timeline so you won't lose your work, but if you want to make a change to it, you'll either have to start over in Final Cut or return to LumaFusion to make a change and re-export it. Also, some effects simply don't exist in Final Cut. For example, the stretch mode and focus mode from the frame and fit editor will not show up in the Final Cut transfer. Let's take a look at how this works. This timeline has multiple tracks of video and audio, as well as transitions on both primary and secondary tracks, position changes with crops, animated objects with rotation via keyframes, audio levels adjusted via keyframes, opacity adjustments, and a speed change. To export the project, tap on the Share Export menu and choose XML Project Package. Pick a location, I plan to airdrop this to my laptop, and on the next page, if you have any content that isn't a perfect translation, such as titles, you'll see a warning here. Next, you can choose what media you want included. The first choice, Full Media, will include the entirety of every clip added to the timeline. That means if you shot a minute-long clip but only used five seconds of it, the entire minute-long clip will be exported. This may be convenient, but will also result in larger export packages. The next choice, Trimmed Media, will only export the portions of the clips you used, plus up to about two-second handles. So again, if you have a one-minute shot but only used five seconds of it, this export will include about nine seconds, the five seconds used, plus up to two second handles on either side, if available. No relinkable media, as it sounds, does not include media that can be relinked once you open the project in Final Cut Pro. So it will not transfer media that was imported to LumaFusion from Dropbox or other cloud storage, media from a USB-C connected drive, or proxy media from Narbox or Frame.io. But it does include media that would not be possible to relink, such as media from the Photos app, and media that comes from inside of LumaFusion, like titles, rendered mixdowns, and Storyblocks media. So if you have access to the original video files, i.e. the memory cards still have their media, or the original footage has already been added to your computer, you can export a small XML file with the No Relinkable Media option, and then relink to the original clips in Final Cut Pro. If you're editing using a proxy workflow, such as when using Frame.io or using media imported to a Narbox, then rendered as proxies for better performance in LumaFusion, this is the option to use so that the lower quality proxy media is left behind and you can connect to the original source media in Final Cut Pro. You'll see a file size estimate at the bottom and that's it. Tap export, change the name if you want to, and tap export again. The project will be packaged up and since I chose AirDrop, I can now drop it to my MacBook Pro. Now let's have a look at the Mac. Double click the zip file to open that then double click the FCP XML file. Final Cut will ask what library to import it into. You can create a new one if you like as well. And that's all there is to it. Now let's see how this translated. The timeline looks the same. Here's a title that was rendered to a graphic PNG file as expected. You can see video transitions added here and the keyframed movement and audio keyframes here. This slow motion clip is playing at the right speed. And overall, this looks great. Finally, here are some guidelines and best practices to make sure your projects translate to Final Cut Pro as accurately as possible, and you have the best experience possible with this feature. First, I wanna clarify the use of iOS Photos app with LumaFusion. If your intention is to start a project in LumaFusion and finish it in Final Cut Pro, and you wanna relink to the original media in Final Cut instead of transferring huge XML files containing full original media, it's absolutely in your best interest 
to not import your footage to the iOS Photos app first. Media that goes through the Photos app loses its association with the original clips, so you can't automatically relink to the original footage, even if you copy the same media from the same memory card into Final Cut Pro later on. So instead, you want to import either directly into LumaFusion from your SD card, which you of course can now do, or import via cloud storage or a connected drive. Just don't use the Photos app as an intermediary. Next, when converting frame rates, for example, from 25 FPS to 30 or even 29.97 to 30, it is not possible to ensure that the exact same frames are used to create the conversion on each system. For that reason, it's always best to avoid frame rate conversions by shooting and editing at the frame rate of your final timeline or in an equally divisible frame rate, like if you shoot at 59.94 and edit at 29.97. Also, some features which are possible in LumaFusion, such as edge softness and quarter radius on crops and the stretch and focus fit modes are not applied in the same way in Final Cut Pro. So those effects would have to be recreated. Finally, when using this feature, it's important to plan on creating advanced audio and video effects, chroma keys, and applying color corrections at the end of your workflow in Final Cut Pro. If you're working with LUTs, for example, if you shoot log footage, you can of course easily reapply that LUT in Final Cut Pro later. This exciting new feature works great today, and as export to XML continues to mature, support for other NLEs and additional features that can be translated with 100% accuracy will be added. I hope you enjoy this awesome new capability in LumaFusion.